Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video tutorial, we will draw a black and white portrait step by step. Then, we'll add color and turn this into this. As usual, I'll start with a sketch. I'm using a harder pencil to lay in the general proportions and shapes. You can use a grid to help capture the likeness. It's completely up to you. Once I'm more confident in how the drawing is coming together, I switch to a softer pencil to make the lines clearer and more defined. This helps reinforce the structure I've built and sets the foundation for the next stages. With the sketch complete, we can move on to the main part of the portrait. I'll be using charcoal, but you're welcome to use any technique that suits your style for black and white drawing. Working in black and white removes the distraction of color and allows me to concentrate fully on the character, emotion, and structure of the portrait. It helps me focus on the values, contrasts, and overall mood. At this stage, I begin by covering the entire sheet with a range of black, gray, and white tones, aiming to match the values as closely as possible to the reference image. This creates a strong foundation for the portrait and sets the stage for more refined details later on. Understanding values in black and white portraits. When working in black and white, value becomes your most powerful tool. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of a tone, and it's what gives a portrait depth, structure, and emotion. Without color to rely on, you must express everything, from the shape of the face to the mood of the image, using only shades of gray. Strong portraits have a clear range of values, from the lightest highlights to the deepest shadows. Highlights help define the planes of the face that catch light, while shadows create form and volume. Midtones connect these extremes and bring subtle transitions that make the portrait feel natural and realistic. Training your eye to see value accurately is essential. A common beginner mistake is using too narrow a value range. Everything ends up looking flat. Don't be afraid to push your darks or reserve your brightest highlights. Compare your drawing often to your reference. Squinting your eyes can help simplify the image into shapes of light and dark. In black and white, value is your color. Mastering it gives you full control over contrast, mood, and focus, and it's one of the most important foundations in realistic portrait drawing. Once the entire sheet is covered in black and white values, I start adding more detail. I use different blending brushes to soften the transitions and smooth out the surface of the drawing. This kind of blending works well in the early stages to build structure, but later on I use it more sparingly. Too much blending can destroy the texture and make the portrait look flat or overworked. When working with charcoal, you're essentially drawing with just one color, black. The white in your artwork comes from the paper itself, which means you're constantly balancing the dark marks you make with the light areas you preserve. What makes charcoal so versatile is that you're not only drawing with the charcoal itself, you're also drawing with the eraser. An eraser isn't just for correcting mistakes, it becomes a tool for pulling out highlights, shaping light, and creating contrast. By lifting charcoal from the paper, you can carve out features, add texture, and bring depth to the portrait. This push and pull between dark and light is what gives a black and white charcoal portrait its drama and form. At this point, I start zooming in and taking a closer look at the finer details. I switch to smaller brush sizes to capture those subtle features that bring the portrait to life. Naturally, the face is the most important area, and focusing on the details helps me get closer to the likeness of the person I'm drawing. I pay special attention to the eyes, as they tend to draw the viewer's focus and carry much of the character and emotion in a portrait.
I continue refining the portrait by gently smoothing areas, lifting highlights with the eraser, and reapplying touches of charcoal where needed, always being careful to preserve the texture of the drawing. I revisit the eyes repeatedly, making subtle adjustments until they feel just right. They're such a vital part of the portrait, and I want to capture their expression with precision. For the smallest, most delicate details, like fine lines and sharp edges, I switch to a pencil brush for greater control. Don't forget to occasionally flip both your drawing and the reference image horizontally. This simple trick is incredibly useful. It gives you a fresh perspective and helps reveal mistakes or imbalances that your eye might have gotten used to. I often catch things I didn't notice before, like proportions being slightly off or angles that need adjusting. Mirroring the image is a great way to step back mentally and evaluate the portrait with fresh eyes. It's one of the most effective habits for improving accuracy and achieving a more realistic result. It's important to treat each material in the portrait differently in order to make the image feel believable and visually rich. For example, skin should be rendered with a softer, smoother approach to reflect its natural surface and subtle tonal transition. I take extra care to blend gently and build up value gradually in these areas to suggest softness and form. In contrast, the hair calls for a rougher, more textured treatment, with flowing, directional strokes that suggest movement and volume. The rhythm and swing of the brush strokes help bring energy and life to the portrait. As for the clothing, I usually approach it with less detail and refinement than the face or hair, but it still needs enough attention to feel like a cohesive part of the image. It supports the portrait as a whole, adding context and balance without pulling focus away from the most expressive areas. Paying attention to these subtle differences in texture and treatment adds depth and realism to the final piece. I'd like to take a moment to emphasize how important it is for you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Creating content takes a lot of time, and every share, comment, and like helps promote it. Your support fuels my drive and motivation for future projects. Thank you in advance. I truly appreciate it. Pay attention to how I handle the clothing and the headphones. These elements are secondary to the face, but they still play an important supporting role in the portrait. I keep the values accurate so they sit well within the composition, but I intentionally use less detail to avoid drawing attention away from the focal point. The same approach applies to the hat. It's made of a different material than the clothing, so I suggest its texture in a way that distinguishes it without over-rendering. These subtle differences in treatment help reinforce the realism and add depth while still keeping the viewer's focus where it matters most, on the face. Now I'm returning to the hair, which still needs more refinement and detail. My goal isn't to draw every individual strand. Instead, I'm focusing on creating the illusion of hair through carefully placed highlights and shadows. Notice how I use the eraser to pull out highlights, bringing dimension and texture to the hair without overworking it. At the same time, I'm adding cast shadows where the hair overlaps the face. These subtle shadow shapes are important. They help ground the hair in the portrait and add realism by showing how the different elements interact with light and each other. Now it's time for the final finishing touches. This stage is all about refining the details, adding where something feels incomplete, subtracting where there's too much, and gently blending to bring everything together. I give special attention to the lips as they're one of the most delicate and expressive features of the face. A few careful adjustments here can make a big difference, adding subtle emotion and helping the portrait feel more alive and complete. I left the eyelashes for the final step, drawing them in carefully with a pencil brush to keep them sharp and defined. With that done, I feel the black and white stage is complete and I'm ready to move on to the next phase, adding color to bring the portrait to life. Start by creating a new layer above your portrait. Change the layer mode from normal to color. 
Then use a simple wet brush to begin adding color. This will allow the values from the black and white layer to show through while you focus on building natural tones. At first glance, the face might appear to be a single, uniform color, but that's far from the truth. In the lighter areas, the skin tends to have a warmer, yellowish tone with subtle, cool reflections. In the shadows, the colors shift noticeably, often taking on cooler hues like soft reds, purples, and even hints of blue. These subtle variations are what give the skin a sense of depth, realism, and life. The background is kept less colorful and more subdued to help create a sense of depth and atmosphere, allowing the portrait to stand out and giving the illusion of space. As for the hat, clothing, and headphones, each has its own local color, but I never treat them in isolation. I always incorporate subtle tones from their surroundings to create harmony and unity within the image. This kind of color blending helps everything feel connected and more believable, as objects in real life naturally reflect and absorb colors from their environment. After I've filled the entire portrait with a base layer of color, I return to individual areas to refine and adjust them. This stage is about enhancing realism and making the image more visually interesting. I carefully tweak the hues, shifting between warm and cool tones depending on the lighting and the forms. The interplay of warm and cool colors is just as powerful as the contrast between light and shadow in a black and white portrait. It helps define shapes, suggest depth, and guide the viewer's eye through the composition. These subtle color variations are what give the portrait a more lifelike and dynamic quality. I noticed a few imperfections in the black and white portrait, so I returned to that layer to make some adjustments. I refined a few areas and enhanced some of the highlights to improve the overall balance and bring more clarity to the form. I'm now in the final stages of the portrait, and it's always exciting to see everything come together. This piece took about five hours to complete, which is pretty quick for this kind of work. I could have spent more time refining the details, but the goal was to share my process in a simple and helpful way. I truly hope you found it useful. Thanks so much for your support. It really means a lot. All the best and see you in the next video. Goodbye.